Um, and I'll start with the uh, land, land at Lodgeman. Uh, today we have uh, participants joining us from both campuses. Um, for UBC Vancouver, uh, Point Break campus, we respectfully acknowledge that the land on which we work and live is uh, the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Muslim people. Um, UBC Okanagan campus, we respectfully uh, acknowledge that the land on which we worked and live is the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Silk Okanagan peoples. Thank you. Um, and I'll start with an outline of today's uh, session. Uh, we'll start with uh, what we expect to achieve in the session. Um, um, and I'll get into details, uh, a little bit um, details as to um, what we currently provide in the student experience of instruction reports. Um, and then we'll dive in, dive into the data um, and then we'll get into uh, talking more, Abdulazim will we'll talk more about the reported metrics, um, uh, IM, interpolated median, PF, percent favorable, and dispersion index DI. Um, and continue on, we'll talk about in how to interpret the say results. Um, and then we'll move into sort of a live demo of a um, say dashboard that we've worked on in the last two years or so. Um, and finally, we'll get to um, the group activity portion of the session. Um, and again, uh, then at which one actually then we will start the reporting and we will get into the QA. Thank you. Um, and what we expect to achieve today. Um, at the end of this session, uh, we hope you will have a better understanding of the UBC say metrics. Um, um, we'll be able to use simple graphics uh, scatter plots um, to explain the relationship between the reported metrics um, and interpret the say data within context and in a more meaningful way. Um, and finally, reflect on student comments as they may relate to the numerical res res uh, responses that we receive. Um, and here we are, uh, diving into the instructor report. Um, this is a, screen a screenshot taken out of um, the native report that um, we generate out of the survey system blue. Um, what you're seeing here is sort of the first portion that you see in the report. Um, uh, and this part is on the university module items. Um, so the six questions that we ask at UBC. Um, what you see here is uh, histograms as to how students responded to each question, um, the, uh, basically outlining how many students answer strongly agree to strongly disagree um, in the you know, graphical format. Um, so that's that. And following that histogram, cool. we also include a uh, data table that has similar information um, you see here on the left, the questions, the six questions um, that were asked, um, and then on the right-hand side, all numbers. Uh, and from top, uh, the big N, meaning the number of expected students, so the number of students enrolled in the course, small N, how many students responded to the survey. Um, and similarly, you have SD, strongly disagree, D, disagree, N, neutral, A, agree, SA, strongly agree. Um, so the number of students who answer in each of the pods. Um, and then finally, the far three columns, uh, IM, interpolated median, PF, percent favorable, percent favorable, and DI, dispersion index. And of course, we'll get into more about the metrics later. Um, one note on this screen while we are here, um, the six questions that are presented on the screen are questions that we started asking since winter of 2021. Uh, prior to that, um, UBC Vancouver has a different set of six questions. Uh, the question texts are different. Um, and for UBC Okanagan, there were um, another set of questions that were asked to uh, for the Okanagan campus. So in 2021, uh, winter of that year, uh, we uh, sub aligned the questions, the university questions for both campuses, and they're all asking this set of questions uh, for for both campuses. And uh, depending on the faculty, you, your faculty or department may have additional questions as asked. Um, uh, today's Workshop we primarily focus on the UMI, you know, to present the data to show you how it looks. Um, so that's the background. Um, and and then next step, we are going to get into a little bit more information about the data itself. Um, so say data are categorical, uh, but ordinal in nature. Ordinal meaning that you know it has a sense of order. Strongly agree is higher um, or better than agree, higher than neutral, and etc. and etc. Um, and UBC collects say data using a balanced Likert weighting, 
Likert type grading scale, um, the UMI university, university module item questions use a balanced five point Likert scale. Um, it goes from strongly agree, uh, strongly disagree to strongly agree. Um, and some faculty questions um, use a balanced seven point Likert scale. So it you know goes from entirely disagree and has more uh, response type in between and then goes to entirely agree, for example. Um, so a little note about balanced Likert re reading scales. Um, it have equal number, it, they have an equal number of positive or favorable and negative or unfavorable response categories. Um, uh, in, you know, one example, you know, you see on the right hand side, you know, you have like very sad, crying, smiley face to very happy, strongly agree, smiley face, and then with a neutral in, in between uh, uh, being the three. Um, and often, but not necessarily centered around neutral, so like uh, the, 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 the indifferent face. Um, and then, um, but it can have e both even or odd number of responses ca uh, categories. So the second, uh, the green boxes underneath also applies. Um, they are also a balanced like rating scale in that um, you have an equal number of a favorable and unfavorable number of responses. Um, so, and finally, unlike unbalanced scales, the bounds of what is favorable are well-defined. So it's, you know, left side and right hand side between the neutral. Um, thank you. Um, and then uh, we'll move into the same metrics. Um, so like I mentioned a couple of times now, um, the, the three metrics that UBC reports are uh, the dispersion index, and you will often see us referencing it as DI, um, percent favorable PF, and interpolated median IM. And from here, I'll turn it over to Abdulazi. Okay, thank you, Alison. Um, starting with the, the dispersion index, uh, this is actually a, a measure of the data spread. You can think of it as a measure of variability, similar to what we use in parametric methods, uh, the standard deviation. Um, and this particular measure, there is a number of them in the literature. Uh, this one that we happen to pick, uh, UPC happen to choose, uh, range in value from zero to one. Zero indicate that all respondents replied with the same response. Uh, an extreme value of one would occur when the respondent is split evenly between uh, the two extremes. Uh, strongly agree and strongly disagree on the five-point scale. Uh, in our UBC data, we rarely see the dispersion index exceeding 0.8 or 0.85. And usually that indicates polarized ratings, and we're going to talk about polarizing uh, later on. And it's often associated with surveys that did not meet our recommended minimum response rate. Uh, these are our own general guidelines for low, medium, high, and extremely high uh, dispersion. Uh, we'll talk more about this when we get uh, to the uh, to putting the three measures together. Uh, uh, these are three examples of dispersion index. The first one, uh, we have 40 of the 60 respondents responding with agree. Uh, 20 responding with the next category, uh, strongly agree. That is dash, maybe you can point to that. Uh, 40 agreeing and 20 strongly agreeing. So the, this results in a low dispersion of 0.22. Uh, in the middle, we have a, an example where the respondents are all over the place. So there is a, a good number that responded with the two extremes, strongly disagree and strongly agree. And with the other respondents uh, distributed almost evenly for the other three categories, resulting in a high dispersion. And then the third example is basically the theoretical maximum, where the respondent is split evenly between the, the two extreme categories, resulting in uh, an index of one, which I have yet to see in actual data. Uh, percent favorable is a simple uh, measure. Uh, it's basically the percentage of the respondent that agreed or strongly agreed, so the favorable responses, expressed as a percentage of the total number of responses. It is simple, intuitive, uh, yet uh, it is somewhat blunt uh, because it does not distinguish between agree and strongly agree. But it's a useful measure, and we will see how it relates to the other two measures uh, in a bit. Uh, next, we have the interpolated 
median, but before I get into the interpret median, I'd like to talk a little bit about medians and distributions, and I'll try to keep this at a very high level. Uh, we have two instructors here. They're both teaching smaller classes. Uh, good response rate. The uh, first one has 18 responses. The second one, instructor B, has uh, 19 responses. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the median and the distribution around the value of the median because these are the basis for calculating the interpolated median, and it will help you to um, relate better to the interpolation process. So in instructor A uh, has, as I said, uh, an even number of responses, 18. The median, or as my colleague Judy calls it, the number in the middle, would be the average of the ninth and tenth uh, uh, responses. So it's the average of those two four, so it's a four. If we look at the distribution rel relative to the value of the median, we see that there are nine responses in black that are equal to the median nine responses in black that are equal to the median, those nine fours. There are six responses in blue that are greater than the value of the median. And there are three responses in red that are below the value of the median. And these three values are exactly what we use to calculate the interpolated median. So the interpolated median very much reflects the distribution around the median. Uh, in example B, in instructor B, uh, the we have uh, 19 responses, so an odd number. And so the 10th response would be the median. Again, the median is four. And, and we see the distribution, two responses greater than the median in blue, eight below the median in red. And there are also nine responses in black that are equal to the, to the median. So we're gonna follow those two instructors in the next couple of slides. Uh, so the, the interpolated median is simply an adjusted median. Think, think of interpolation as adjustment. So we take the median and we have the formula. So the interpolated median is that median, the middle, uh, the, the 50th percentile, adjusted by the quantities, the, the quantity on the right. So that quantity simply says that we take the difference between the number of responses that are greater than the median, n plus, subtract from that the number of responses that are smaller than the median value, divided by double or twice the number of responses that are equal to the median. And that adjustment quantity, n plus minus n minus divided by 2n, uh, does not exceed 0.5. So the absolute value of it, as I shown there, uh, is less than 0.5. At maximum, it gets to would be something very close to 0.5. Rounded to one decimal, it would be 0.5. What happened when is n is zero? Uh, when there is no values, data point that are equal to the median, the interpolated median is simply the median and no interpolation is, is necessary. So that's uh, in a nutshell, the, the, how the interpolated median is calculated. So continuing with the two examples, uh, A and B, again, so for instructor A, the median is four. The adjustment would be six, which is N plus, the number of values that are greater than the median minus three divided by two n, which is 18. And that's about 0.2, so the, uh, which is a positive value. And the interpolated median is adjusted, the median is adjusted upwards by two tenths of a point, giving us an interpolated median of 4.2. In instructor three, we have more responses that are below the median. So the quantity is actually negative. So it would be eight minus two minus six divided by twice n. So that's a negative value of around 0.3. And so the median of four is adjusted downwards by three tenths of a point resulting in an interpolated median of 3.7. And so the interpolated median really reflects the distribution of the scores. And, and we will see that uh, as we, uh, as we uh, continue with this presentation. Um, so next we're gonna look at those three measures, the interpolated median, percent favorable, to basically tell the story behind the numbers. Uh, uh, Daniel uh, Kahneman is a, a Nobel laureate in economics. He is well known for his work on, uh, he's a psychologist actually, not an economist. And he's well known for his work on the um, psychology of judgment and decision-making. Um, yeah, so we're gonna get into the story behind the numbers because we do need a story. This takes us away from 
having to rely on the center of the data, whether we use the mean, the median, or the or, or, or the interpolated median. Uh, this takes us away from looking just at the center of the data and making a decision on, on that number, which in the past was the mean. Uh, at UBC for a long time, we used the mean and the standard deviation. We look at the mean, we compare it to some comparative value, and we decide uh, whether that's acceptable or not, or whatever decision is made. So we're going to move away from that and interrogate the data in a more meaningful uh, way using the three measures that we talked about. So what we have here is the relationship between the interpolated median and percent favorable. I actually stumbled on this relationship a few years ago, about four years ago. Uh, when I plotted the percent favorable across the interpolated median, the graph looked kind of funny to me. Uh, I, and then I realized that it actually goes through a certain point. And so uh, fast forward to the day we have, uh, we put together this uh, this metrics, uh, which UBC is pioneering and, and other schools are now interested in, in following the, the, the leadership of uh, the lead of UBC. Uh, so at a glance, we uh, this is actually uh, uh, all the instructors campus-wide in 2022 winter term one. This is UMI question number five. Uh, and uh, every point, every dot in this uh, graph represent the intersection of the percent favorable and the interpolated median for that instructor. 96% of the instructors are in this upper right quadrant and 4% are in the lower quadrant. Um, the upper quadrant uh, represent percent favorable greater than 50% and an interpolated median greater than 3.5. So the points 3.5 and 50% split the data into two, uh, into two groups. Those are those instructors with uh, an interpolated mean of 3.5 or higher and 50% or higher. And the other category, uh, the other group would be the, those who have interpolated median less than 3.5. Mathematically, there should be no data in the upper left or the bottom right subquadrant. So um, this gives us a, a, a good break of the uh, uh, of the of, of the uh, of the data, and, and we'll talk more about about this uh, uh, this relationship. And uh, so the relationship actually applies to all balanced Likert type scales. Uh, we saw in the five point scale that the pivot point that of that relationship is 3.5. If we can go back to the previous slide, uh, Tash, you can just jump back. Uh, the pivot point here, uh, 3.5, actually, uh, for a five point scale, uh, within the concept of interpolation, if we think of a median of four or a response of four from a student uh, or responses of four, those responses. Uh, we can think of them as representing a perspective that uh, range from those bordering on uh, neutral to those leaning towards uh, strongly agree. So three to five. And so uh, we can think of the four as a midpoint between uh, 3.5 and 4.5. And in the interpolation process, we can adjust that for up to 4.5 or down to 3.5, depending on the inter depending on the distribution. And so 3.5 is actually the lower bound for a favorable response. So if you go to the seven point scale, which is the next one, this is from one faculty question that uses a five point scale. Uh, we see that the uh, pivot point is at 4.5 and 50%. Now, if you think about the seven point scale, we have three unfavorable, one, two, three, four would be neutral and five, six, and seven on that scale would be favorable. So the lowest favorable value is five, which could be interpolated between 4.5 and 5.5. And so again, 4.5 is the lower bound of the favorable response. And so it is a pivot point for the relationship. So this uh, this relationship uh, is applicable to all balanced scales, regardless of the number of uh, points in the scale. And again, there should be no data in the upper left or the bottom right uh, subquadrants. Uh, now we're going to look to see how this relationship is affected by the dispersion in the data. And if you look at this table, uh, we have eight classes of dispersion index ranging from zero to greater than 8.5 across. And we have five classes of the interpolated median. The first three rows correspond to an interpolated median that is greater than 3.5. 
And so they actually correspond to the upper quadrant of the graph. The lower two rows has an interpolated median less than 3.5. And so they correspond to the, uh, to the lower quadrant in the graph. If we look in the first three uh, rows, we see that as dispersion increases, percent favorable decreases, which is in brackets. So uh, in each cell, we have the number of instructors in that category. So uh, in that first one, we have 40 instructors. Uh, they have zero dispersion and their interpolated median is between 4.5 and five. Uh, and so we know that uh, all the students in all those 40 surveys uh, responded with a five because they cannot agree on any other value between 4.5 and five. So we see that the percent favorable decreases as dispersion increases. This is true in row one, two, and very much row three. For a given value of the interpolated median, this is exactly correct. Here we have, because we're using the average, it might fluctuate in the middle rows, but you can see that by a large uh, percent favorable decreases as dispersion increases. In the lower two rows, the opposite is true. Uh, the higher is the dispersion, the higher will be the percent favorable. And so now we're going to use this effect of the dispersion index on this relationship to see how we can integrate the data using the three measures in a meaningful way and tell the story uh, behind the numbers. So this is a zoom on the upper quadrant of that graph, the first three rows of the table. And we can see that the percentage is the number of instructors in each one of those subquadrants. And we can see that from the mean dispersion, uh, for example, in the upper right, the mean dispersion is 0.25. And in the lower uh, right quadrant, it's 0.53. So we see we see that in each one of, set of two uh, of those subquadrant, uh, the lower the dispersion, the higher the dispersion, the lower would be the percent favorable. So this is uh, an example of question UMI 6 uh, from 2022, winter term 2. Um, we're going to look at two instructors as example of how we can uh, interpret those three measures uh, to actually tell the story. So starting with the instructor, uh, the instructor in the upper left, uh, indicated by the circle, uh, and the values for that instructor are actually uh, above the point. So the interpolated median is 3.9, as you can see. Uh, the percent favorable is 83%. And it has a relatively low dispersion of 0.29. Now, this particular instructor uh, with an interpolated mean of 3.9, the mean would not be far off from 3.9. It will be close to that number. If we judge that, uh, if we look at this uh, student experience of instruction and we judge it by the center of the data, whether it's the interpolated median, the mean, for that matter, uh, at best, it will be just to be average. And at worst, if the average for that department or unit, this is a campus wide, would be higher than 4.2 or 3, uh, they would have been just to be below average. But if we look at the percent favorable, this instructor actually reached 83%, uh, more than 8 out of 10 of the students rated their experience favorably, and so they were actually reached by this instructor. So in this upper left quadrant, uh, there is an issue of fairness when we look at the data that those three measures will help us to address that issue rather than just focus on one on one measure. Uh, if we look at the instructor in the bottom right, which I uh, labeled polarized, uh, this instructor has uh, an interpolated median, the numbers are above the dot again, uh, an interpolated median of 4.7, percent favorable of 59%, and a high dispersion of 0.57. So we can see that this instructor uh, 41% of the student respondent did not rate their experience favorably. Again, if we just look at the center of the data, the mean or the interpolated median, we get something like 4.7 or 4.8. And we say, great, on a scale of one to five, that's fantastic. And we just move on. But when we look at the three measures, we see that there is some polarizing happening. 41% of the respondent did not have their experience favorably. So we actually dig in the data to see why this may be the case. And we found out that this instructor is teaching a cross-listed course 
eight of the students, the class has 25 students. Eight of them are from the faculty of the instructor. Uh, and, fifth, uh, and 17 are from another faculty. The eight students from the faculty of this instructor all responded to the survey. And the interpolated median of the data of those eight students is 4.9, with a percent favorable of 86%. So it's very clear that the instructor reached to those eight students, who are and this is a graduate course, by the way, uh, who are taking this course uh, from his faculty. If we look at the 18 students, 17 students who are from the other faculty, uh, 15 of them responded. It's still a very high uh, response rate. Their interpolated median, their data has an interpolated median of 3.4 and a percent favorable of 47%. So 53, more than half of the students that's taking this course from the other faculty did not read their experience favorably. In other words, the instructor did not reach to those uh, students on the question, I have learned a great deal from this instructor. And so um, we can see clearly that looking at the three statistic allow us to uh, uh, to actually, uh, actually uh, another point here, looking at the interpolated median of 4.3, we can say, I can tell you that the, more than 50% of the respondent from both classes, from both courses, uh, rated their experience as a five. And how do we know that based on the IM of 4.7 that the median is, is five and so more than half is, is fives in the data? It's because if the interpolated median is four, it could not have been adjusted upwards by 0. 0.7 because we know that the maximum adjustment value is 0. 0.5. So the median should have been or must be a five that was adjusted downwards by three tenths of a point. Um, so those two examples are actually uh, good examples uh, to allow us uh, to interrogate the data in a more meaningful way. If we actually fit a regression line across this uh, uh, across the diagonal through this cloud of data, uh, we would have a good fit. And so along that diagonal, both the interpolated median and the percent favorable are telling the same story. They go hand in hand. It's when we go off the diagonal in the upper left or the bottom right where the polarizing is happening is where the story becomes different because the two measures are now telling us two different things. And um, so we need to look at that and and and, and that will help us to, to clearly understand and tell the story behind those numbers. Uh, uh, the other thing that the instructor can look at is the students' comments, because in those cases they they can clearly see uh, why that it, it, in this particular uh, case of the lower bottom quadrant, why fifty three percent of the students who are taking this course from a different faculty uh, uh, did not read their experience favorably. Uh, that might be uh, shown in the in the students' comment. Uh, we're going to take one more example. Uh, this is one academic unit. Uh, if you click a, a couple of times, uh, we will see the data on the left. Uh, one more time. Yes. So this is one academic unit. I believe it's from 2020. Uh, again, we have the graph of the percent favorable across the interpolated median. Uh, a good number of the structures of the instructors are in the upper right quadrant. Uh, there are some few instructors in the lower quadrant. Uh, we're going to take the red dot is actually the aggregate for the whole academic unit. So the aggregate value, and I try to stay away from using the word average. Uh, so the interpolated, the aggregated interpolated median is 4.2. We can see that in the left. Percent favorable is 76% uh, with a dispersion of 0.52. So if we look at instructor C at the very top there, uh, instructor C has an interpolated median of 4.3, which is quite comparable to the aggregate. Again, if we look at the center of the data only, that 4.3 would have been just to be average compared to the IM of 4.2. And I'm not really an advocate of, compa of comparing, and people are used to getting the aggregates or the average for a unit and the, the, the comparison. Uh, this matrix allows us to actually look at the instructor and interrogate the data for that instructor and understand how the student responded without even looking at the aggregate. But, if we, in the old system, if we just look at the mean, uh, which will be very similar, close to the 4.3 IM, uh, that instructor would have been judged to be average. But we see that with a low dispersion of 2.24, uh, 100% of the students responded with a favorable response. So they all rated their experience favorably. Uh, if we look at instructor A, 
with a uh, interpolated median of 3.9 percent favorable of 80 percent a kind of a lower dispersion of 0.35 uh, that in structure again would have been judged to be below average quote unquote but their percent favorable is actually four point percent four percentage point higher than the aggregate for that academic unit uh, in structure D and B, if we look at in structure D at the top, uh, they have an interpolated median of 4.5, 100% favorable rating, a low dispersion of 0.25. In structure B down uh, has uh, a similar, uh, a slightly higher uh, interpolated median of 4.6, a high dispersion of 0.57, 73% favorable rating, uh, favorable uh, responses, uh, which means that the instructor did not reach out to about 27% of the respondents. Um, and again, just judging by the 4.6, the center of the data, we would have arrived at a different conclusion when we take all three measures into consideration. We see that this instructor, uh, more than uh, one in four student uh, respondents did not read their experience favorably. And perhaps maybe the students' comments could shed light on why that might be the case. Uh, for this particular uh, question, I believe this is university module item five, which is about the uh, instructor showing uh, or interest in the student learning throughout the course. So that brings me to, to the end of my uh, part of my presentation. And I'm going to, oh, um, just before I conclude, uh, Tizi Tash is going to put that tiny URL in the, um, in the chat. For those of you who might be interested more, uh, this is our article that we published in, uh, last year in 2023, proposing this metrics. We have been using it at UBC for now it's four years, maybe five years, uh, four years, no, five years. Uh, uh, but we only published this last year, but we have been sharing it uh, in conferences and so on. Uh, if you are interested, um, you can take a look at the article. Uh, it's an open access, so you don't need to be logged from UBC uh, uh, you can uh, access it free. So it's a free access article uh, for more information about this uh, metrics. Uh, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Tizitash, to take us through the, um, through the dashboards uh, that uh, are currently being developed. Okay, thank you, Abdulazim. And let me change the share. Thank you. So now I'm going to uh, walk you through to the dashboards that we have been developing uh, since for the last two years. And we have two dashboards, uh, one instructor dashboard and one dashboard for the academic units. And this dashboard is in the development process. And for the last two weeks, uh, we uh, share this dashboard for some users and we get a feedback and we are working on the feedback now, but I will go through uh, first the instructor dashboard. So uh, the first part on the instructor dashboard is some uh, information about the dashboard, what parts we have, how to navigate uh, about the different measures. Uh, and on the instructor dashboard, we have like two visualizations and uh, one data summary. So I will go to the visualization. So one by one, the first visualization we have is a scatter plot. As uh, Alison mentioned earlier uh, at the beginning, uh, we have a scatter plot that shows the instructor's uh, survey result in context with the campus. So on this dashboard, uh, we have like, can be accessed by individual instructors uh, for each campus. And uh, you can see the dark blue dots, dots are the instructor points and the red one is the campus aggregate. And the light blue dots at the back is uh, the campus data, all instructors and all courses in the campus. If it is UBC logged in as UBC in Vancouver instructor, the background will be Vancouver instructor in courses. As UBCO, it will be the UBCO instructor, uh, all instructor in courses. So for each in, uh, dark blue dots, it will show the instructor name, the academic period, which course, whether that course met the required uh, recommended minimum response rate, the interpolated median, percent favorable, and dispersion index. And uh, 
we displayed all the six UMI questions in uh, one page. And here uh, we can, they can also filter like the, by the pre and post before the questions are changed and uh, after the questions are changed. So these filters will allow uh, to separate because we are not gonna combine those two questions. It can be uh, viewed like in different groups. And uh, we have at the bottom also the courses that are displayed uh, are uh, displayed here, which courses and the full question description is uh, displayed at the bottom. So just to uh, reiterate here what Abdullah mentioned in the presentation, here we can see these two points. They have the same uh, interpolated median, but as the dispersion index, uh, in, index increases, the percent favorable uh, decline, you can see here that the dispersion index is 0.66 and the percent favorable is 67%, but for the one uh, above, the dispersion index is 0.48 and the person favorable is 74%. So this is uh, the scatter plot uh, we have for the instructor dashboard. So this is a campus wide and this is individual instructor and the light blue dots are uh, the background data for all, camp for all instructor and courses for that period. Then the second visualization we have is the trend line. And on this trend line, uh, we are trying to show how uh, the interpolated median, the blue line, and the percent favorable change through time for each period. Again, we have the pre and post filter here uh, for each period for a given course. And here we can show three UMI questions at a time and instructors who have access to this dashboard can alternate and see the remaining uh, questions by uh, applying this filter. But we will show like one course at a time uh, for each, uh, for the period of academic year, like from for this one, from 2021 to 2022, uh, for this uh, time period. And the last one we have on the instructor dashboard is the data summary. So whatever uh, shown on the in the scatter plot is displayed in the data summary. We will have the pre-post uh, period, the academic period, the course section, uh, the number of invited, the response rate, whether it met the recommended minimum response rate. And the three measures, interpolated median, percent favorable dispersion index, and the campus-wide comparator. And the instructors can apply the filters at the right to switch between these two periods and uh, the academic sessions. Now I will go ahead and uh, show the academic unit one, but uh, if you have any question, uh, you can ask me at the end of presenting this dashboard. So for the academic unit one, we have the same uh, information on the landing page about uh, what visualizations are included uh, and additional information. And we have here uh, one scatter plot. So for the academic unit one, uh, let me go back again. Here, the number uh, we have here, uh, the data that shows like uh, for each faculty, if it can be accessed by the faculty admins or admins from uh, a given department. And they can, uh, when they log in, they will be accessed to their specific uh, uh, faculty or department. And these numbers will give like how many surveys are completed for that given period. and uh, what percentage of those surveys met the recommended minimum response rate. So this number shows that one. But uh, once the revision is completed, we are going to show this in the trained line format. So in the future, when we have soft launch, you may not see these numbers, but these numbers state how many surveys are completed and the percentage of surveys uh, met that uh, recommended minimum response rate. And this will... Uh, have the same purpose as the ones that are shown like in tab. So this will take us to the scatter plot. This is to the data summary and this to the SAC summaries. 
the same as displayed on the upper tab. So I will jump to the scatter plot. Here for the scatter plot for the academic unit one, we have the background data as uh, the faculty or the department. And the dark blue dots are the instructors that is selected here. And uh, we have a couple of aggregates here. We have uh, the green one that is a faculty aggregate. And we have uh, the purple one that is a department or school aggregate. And this one is the red one is the campus level aggregate. And the dark blue dots are the individual instructor in that uh, faculty or department. And the light blues are all the instructors in that faculty or department. So if I uh, change uh, to another uh, instructor, so it will show this instructor for this period, uh, this the course, I am person favorable dispersion index whether uh, it met the recommended minimum response rate and the response rate is displayed when you hover over and it will show in context with that faculty or campus. And uh, to, uh, let me select, yeah. So to give uh, also uh, the polarization that Abdulazi mentioned in the earlier presentation, you can see all the instructors or the points here are polarized and uh, I can scroll down and this, this is the example that was mentioned earlier. It is a cross-listed course. It has interpolated a median of 4.7 percent favorable, 59 percent in dispersion index uh, 0.56. And uh, that is explained in the scatter plot. And then the other visualization we have for the academic unit one is the data summary. So the data summary, in the data summary, we have uh, the term, the instructor, the questions, the invited response, the instructor interpolated median in person favorable, and we have the three comparators here, the faculty interpolated median and faculty percent favorable. We have the department interpolated median and department percent favorable, and the year level interpolated median and the year level percent favorable. And this year level uh, aggregates are uh, the year level within uh, the department. So we have uh, these uh, aggregates and still instructors, uh, faculty admins, I mean, can come in, uh, check the value for a selected uh, instructor in their department or faculty. So it's the same, we have the same pre and post. And we have uh, those aggregates. And the other visualization on the academic unit one is we have the course percent favorable and I am over time. Uh, and on the upper part, we have the instructor interpolated median in percent favorable. This is a percent favorable uh, and this is I am. And the one in the bottom is the department aggregate. And I can, you can see here like uh, the department aggregate it stays like steady through time, but the interpol the instructor's uh, course over time uh, will fluctuate. And here uh, for the course one, uh, it doesn't include the section. It is only a course uh, for course. So they can see by course and by each EMI. They have to select and see uh, how it changed over time for each uh, UMI question. And they can go uh, pre and post, and we have both these for uh, both campuses. And the last uh, two tabs are uh, the SAC summary. Uh, that is, SAC stands for Senior uh, Appointment Committee. 
And these two data files, data summaries are uh, developed based on the templates that is provided by ISAC. And for the pre-2021, uh, for uh, Okana UBCO, we have question 19. And for uh, uh, Vancouver, we have a question six. So we will have the term, the course, uh, whether it meets the recommended minimum response rate and in invited response person favorable interpolated median and the comparator is the year level uh, interpolated median in person favorable that is calculated within the department. So for uh, yeah, Vancouver, we have the last question, UMI6, and for Okanagan, uh, question 19. But for the post one, we will have all uh, UM, uh, university module question items from one to six for both campuses. And this is developed uh, based on the template that is provided uh, by SAC. I think by this, I will end my presentation for the dashboard.